Okay, we're in section 12 of the notes, it's numerical integration. Um, so let, let me just, I'll sort of go to the whiteboard, we'll, we'll talk about these images, what's given to you and what's expected from you. So this is, um, you know, you're seeing an image of a function, um, a shaded area between, looks like between minus four and 15. And this is a difficult um, function to integrate, if not impossible. And so, you know, what is the function? It's, it's this guy over here. And, we're going to, about, you know, how would you, how would you would integrate that? And the bottom line is sometimes we're not really interested in the exact value, we're interested in approximate value. And computers are really good at this. So this really, this section here is all about using a computer, but realizing when a computer does this, it has to use some approximate te uh, technique. We'll certainly go through that. So I do mention some techniques over here that a computer goes through, and certainly I'm using my computer to do this. I'm not doing this by hand, by the way, a computer is doing these, these for me, doing the computation. I do wanna point out though, when I asked Mathematica to do it, uh, Mathematica is a very high priced package. It does have a trouble with it initially, and then it starts to choke up and it starts to choke up an approximate answer eventually. All right, and let's talk about Sage code, things like that. Our goal here though, is to develop algorithms to uh, compute these areas, all right? Generally speaking though, they are gonna require the use of a computer to do, all right? So we'll go through examples. We'll talk about different rules that you're aware of. The rules that you use in math 120 were the right endpoint, left endpoint, and the midpoint. We will review those techniques, right? The, the rule that was not given to you in math uh, uh, 121 was the trapezoid rule, all right? Nor was Simpson's rule given to you. So let me repeat this, in math 121, you did right endpoint, left endpoint, midpoint, but you didn't do trapezoid or Simpson. All right. Once we go through the uh, notes and develop these formulas, we'll start to do examples. All right. Let me go to the whiteboard. Give me a second to do so. All right, so let's talk about this over here. And <coughs> so we're gonna look at these problems over here. My, my goal is to make sure you understand what we're asked to do. And this is an area of interest over here. I'm looking at the picture and someone says, you know, what does that, what, 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 what would that be if you, um, you know, try to get its area? I'd be asked, it'd be a little difficult. I'd hate to divide this thing up into, you know, a series of rectangles or triangles or whatever and try to figure that out. So we have techniques for it. And my, my goal over here is, you know, certainly if I, if I need to know the area of that thing, it's almost ridiculous to, to say that I would need to know that. But um, I want to point out the area that's representing that picture is given to you over here. And I'll be honest with you, if I were asked to integrate this over here, I would not struggle with this. I would go right to a computer. All right, let me write that down for you. I'd go right to a computer. Now, this example is kind of made up. I'm not going to say it's something that people are terribly interested in integrating on. But you know, what, what I would normally do is I, I draw the picture of it and then integrate using computer. So I did this on my computer and my computer, I uh, use an application called Grapher and using three different methods, it came up with these numbers over here. If you look at those numbers, they, 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 they do differ. What do I notice about it? I noticed that the Euler's method is in between Romberg's method and that runge cutting method. All right, so my computer did it for me. It did it automatically. I fed it, it spit it back to me, all right? No problem at all. All right, I'm gonna go to the next page. And again, I'm using a computer still. Then I decided I was gonna ask Mathematica to do it. And again, I, whether you're doing it on your computer or somebody else's computer, Mathematica is a, um, an application that's quite expensive and it choked, all right? What do I mean by choked? It, it actually just you know stood there for a second or two and looked like it didn't know what to, what to do. It looked like it had no idea what to do. So Mathematica actually choked on the problem, all right? Now, by the way, this is a version I was using. It was quite some time ago. I'm not sure if it's still going to choke on it. But then after it choked, it actually, like, it almost felt like it was, it, it swallowed something really bad and it burped out this answer over here. It eventually burped it out. So I'm going to point out what I did with Mathematica. It's right over here. You know, I, I typed this in. It plotted it right over here. And this is the plot. And then I, uh, I integrated it. And what did it do? It, it spit back, you know, basically this thing over here basically saying, who are you kidding? Can't do that. And then I asked it to and integrate. And this is where it started to choke. I want to point out what it said to me. It said, you know, an integrate failed to converge to the prescribed accuracy. 
chapter seven, recursive bisections in X near X, blah, 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 blah. And there's a more thing over here where you could read the more code. And then all of a sudden it just spit this back over here. So the question is, is it aligned with what we had before? Let me go back to that. And it is, it's certainly in line with what we had before, you know, 44.8114. So it looks just like we got with the Euler's method, right? Not bad, all right? So I, my claim about Mathematica, Mathematica, you know, uh, it burped a little bit, but it did spit it back eventually, all right? Question is, how's it doing that? And that's one of the complaints people have about Mathematica. It's closed source software. Although they may talk about their algorithms, they're not gonna show you their code, all right? They're not gonna show you the code. Whereas when you deal with something like Sage, Sage would actually, you'd be able to actually read the code to find out what they're doing, all right? So what I wanna, I wanna go back and talk about the methods that we would like you to know about, all right? And the methods that we'd like you to know about, and I'll write these down for you, is methods that you discussed in Math 121. So I'm gonna write down the three methods that you discussed in Math 121 for doing an integration like this, all right? The first thing you do, your teachers probably drew a picture, something like this over here. I'm gonna say this is f of x on the interval from A to B. And they would say, okay, you can shade the area in. I'll shade it in for you, something like this. And yeah, sometimes they, they spend an interval of time shading. I'm gonna say, I know what I'm doing over here. I know I need to get that shaded region. And then what they said, you have techniques to do it. And the easiest techno technique I would have to say would be the right endpoint. And we normally represent that by saying R sub N, where N is the number of intervals. And what they did was they took this entire interval, which A to B, and they divided N equal parts. So it would be B minus A over N. And then, then they draw in their first approximating rectangle. That's a right endpoint. So you take your right endpoint of this. And they say that this thing over here was, is an approximated of that little tiny area over there. And they say, what's that area? Well, if you look at it, it's going to be the base, which is B minus A. I'll write that down for you. The bases are all the same, by the way. Let me point out the base over here is this, but every base is that. Now, so if every base is that, what are you doing? You're just multiplying by the heights of those things. So what do they do? They say the first one is F, right? This is the function F of X, evaluate this point. And what would that point be? It would be A plus B minus A over N. So they'd write that down, A plus B minus A over N. Then they do the next one. They say F of, well, now it's gonna be A plus two of those. We're moving over two intervals and those intervals are gonna be B minus A over N. So it's gonna be B minus A over N times two. Then they do the next one. And again, the base is always gonna be the same. It's gonna be A plus B minus A over N three. What they start to realize eventually they'll get to the end and the M would be this last guy over here. And what would that be? It would have to be F of B, have to be. That's the end point. So they get over here. Eventually they get to this F of A. And I want to make sure this is B. And it's going to be B minus A over N. And we moved over N intervals. All right, N of them. Now, if you did that over there, what would you get? The ends would cancel. You get A plus B minus A, which would be F of B. Worked out beautifully. So I'm going to write this as a summation. And that's what you did in math 121. Rn is equal to, well, it's going to be the B minus A over N. We're just reviewing what you did in math 121. The sum F of A plus B minus A over N I, where I starts at one and it ends at N. That's the right endpoint method. So right endpoint. Easy peasy, lemon squeezing, all right? And we'll certainly go through examples. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do left end point. A little more complicated, all right? Now granted, I had to say some students say the tough time with the right end point, left end point is gonna be really difficult for them. But what do I know about it is it's really kind of the same thing. We call this LN, the base is still gonna be the same, which is B, minus A over N. And then what do we do? We're doing right endpoints. 
So we're doing this over here. So what's it going to be? If I wrote that down, it's going to be, you know, f of a, that's the right endpoint. The next one is going to be f of a. I have to move over. So it'll be b minus a over n. I got to move over a little bit more each time. I'm moving over the, the, the length of the base, which is b minus a over n times two. And then, you know, I keep going and going and going. b minus a over n times three. That's a three, by the way. I'm getting kind of tired. So I go dot, dot, dot. Here comes my problem. And the problem is it goes to the end, which could be b minus a over n. And it's going to be n of these intervals, by the way, n of them. All right. So where do we start? We actually started at zero. There were none of these things. And then we went to one, two, three. So what would this one over here be? It would be n minus one of those things. All right. So we get the n over there. I want to write it as a sum now. I'm going to write ln down as a sum. It's going to be b minus a over n times the sum f of a. I'm going to say they pretty much all look the same to me. Something like this. I'll put the i over here. But I want to go over here. I'm going to say the i starts somewhere, right? Where does it start? Well, it starts at zero, right? There's, there's no, none of those th things I put down. So i equals one. And where does it stop? n minus one. So that's the left one. And the last one that you did in Math 121 was midpoint rule. Midpoint rule, again, it's a, it's a derived formula. Um, it's fairly easy to derive these formulas um, with the exception of um, the ones we're going to introduce today, uh, which is the midpoint, not midpoint, but I'm sorry, trapezoid rule and Simpson's rule. These ones are uh, pretty easy to do. So R is the first one we did, super simple. L, a little more complicated. Again, the reason for people find capital is the counting of it. Now I'm going to do midpoint, MN more difficult, all right? But what do I know about it? And looking at it, and uh, you know, certainly I, I know the bases were always gonna be B minus A over N, but then I got a problem uh, about the, um, this um, point that they're sampling here, and it's gonna be a midpoint. So, so the first point over here is gonna be A plus half the size of the interval. I'll write that down for you. So it's gonna be F of A plus a half of the size of that interval, which is B minus A over N. And then what do I got to do? And someone says, I have no idea what you're going to do. I have to keep moving over. But if you think about it, what are you moving over? Just an interval length. And I'll write that down for you. So what's the next going to be? F of A plus one half B minus A over N. Plus I move over a little bit and I move over this, this amount. And that's one of those things. I'll put a one down there for you. Again, if I do the next one, what do you get? And this looks kind of complicated. I'll have to simplify it later, but one half B minus A, and that's the first sample point. Then I have to move over two of these things, so forth and so on. All right. Then someone's going to say, you know, where's it going to stop? Well, that's something that's pretty interesting, but we have to, you know, talk about that in more detail, get here. And we're going to get F of A plus one half. Let's put this down. B minus A over N plus B minus A over N. And I want to point out, you know, we are starting at zero and then we get the one, then we get the two. So this has to be N minus one, right? That would be the last one, right? Very last one. Now, I, I got to be honest with you, for a lot of students, this just looks crazy to them. So what I'm going to claim is that this would never be written out in the book, that this is the formula. So I want to kind of look at it and I want to look at the, um, the form of it, all right? So, you know, looking at the form of it, I'm going to say MN equals B minus A over N times the sum. And this comes my trouble. Over. I'm going to write it down for you. It's going to be F of A plus B minus A over 2n. This is not our formula yet. Don't worry about that. Plus, I keep moving over b minus a over n. And I'm going to put an i over here. All right. Now, certainly if I do an i, i would start at zero and go off to n minus one. All right. And that would be a fine formula to put down. But unfortunately, no book puts that one down either. So I'm going to keep rewriting it. I want to aim for what the book does. 
any book by that matter. And I'm going to start at one. Now, if I start at one, I would go to n then. F of, let's write this down then. So if I'm starting at one, I got to be real careful here. I want that first one to be zero, right? So put this over here, b minus a over 2n plus b minus a over n. This would have to be i minus one now. And again, this still looks really crazy to me. So we're going to keep going through it, mn, b minus a. This does take work. It takes effort. And certainly what I mean by that effort, you know, paper and pencil and writing this down. I'm going to look at the inside. I want to point out what I'm looking at over here. I want to look at this over here. And I got to be honest with you, I just don't like the way that's written down there. So what I want to do is I want to rewrite a little bit differently. I'm going to put a two here and a two here. And that, that certainly makes sense to me. So I'm going to write that down for you then. So it's going to be A plus, I'm going to figure, I'm going to uh, factor out something. I'm going to factor out B minus A over 2N. I'm factoring that out. Times, let's see what you're left off with though. 1 plus 2I minus 1. That still looks pretty crazy to me. I'm going to go A plus B minus A over 2N. And what do I get over here? I actually get 2I minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. So this is going to be what most books would write down now. F of, I'll go to the notes later and point this out to you. A plus, let's see, B minus A over 2N, 2I minus 1. All right? Let me go back to the notes, and I want to point out where this is written down for you. Well, I got to find it. Where is it? Oh, it's way over here. So much writing. I, I lost track. And let's see what we got. Let me see if I got the right C here. Let me get the right C, A, 2I minus 1. A lot of writing, right? 2I minus 1, B minus A over 2N. Yeah, we did it, bingo. All right. So we're going to take our first example. All right. First example. And I'm going to write down what the example is and what the work is. And this is the integration from 1 to 4 root x dx. I got to be honest with you. If I were asked to integrate that, I would never approximate that. But I'm going to go through the work, which is going to be, well, that's x to the 1 half, right? So what do you do? You have to add one to that number, which is x to the three halves, divide by three halves, like multiplying by two thirds, blue integration one to four. Let me just get my eraser out here. And I think I can do that. What do you get? Two thirds. That would be, uh, let's see, four times two minus, one. Well, I think I can do that. What do you get over there? Two thirds. That would be eight minus one, which is seven, which is 14 thirds. That's fairly simple. If you were to write that down as a mixed number, that goes in four and two thirds. If you were to write that down as a decimal number, that would be 4.66 repeated forever. All right. Now, by the way, that's not their question. And someone says, well, why isn't that their question? I have to read it. They want me to use n equals six. Now, by the way, I'm not going to use a formula. And I, I want to tell you the reason why I'm not using a formula. I don't want to have to remember anything. So I'm going to say n equals six. And I'm going to do three different ones. I'm going to do rn. Well, what's n? n is six. Let me get my eraser out. I want to do R6. I want to do L6. And I want to do M6. Not by looking at a formula, but by reasoning. All right. What am I going to reason through? Well, what am I doing? I'm doing the uh, this, this um, root function between one and four. So it looks sort of like this over here. 
and they're going to divide into six equal pieces. So if I did that, if I divide this thing into six equal pieces, right? Again, I'm not saying I'm doing a great job over here, but I'm going to try to do this six pieces over here. I'm sorry about that. By the way, those pieces are supposed to look equal. One, two, three, four, five, six. Every base is going to be this. Well, what's the length of the interval? It's three. And it's divided into six equal pieces. So every single base is supposed to be one half. So every base is one half. All right. And what's f of x? Let me write this over here. f of x is the root of x. If you were to do the right endpoint, you would do this. Well, you know what? I want to write these numbers down for you. And the reason that I'm going to put a listing of numbers down here. First number would be one. We're talking about these numbers here. So one, what's the next number going to be? We'll have to move over a half, right? So it's one and a half. What's the next number going to be? Two. What's the next number going to be? Two and a half. What's the next number going to be? Three. Then three and a half. And then what? Four. Right? So I'm going to write them all in the same way. I'm going to write this in terms of twos. This is two over two. This would be three over two. There's a reason for this, by the way. We want to have order in our numbers. Four over two. Five over two. 6 over 2, 7 over 2, 8 over 2. Whoops, sorry about that. So if we're going to use the right endpoint, again, keep in mind this is F, what would the right endpoint be? What would the first one be? It'd be right here, right? And what's that going to be? 3 halves. So what to write down? F of, I'm sorry, that's the wrong place to put it. I'm doing the right one, right? I, I just didn't think. F of three over two plus F of, look how these things are going up. They're really simple. Four halves. Let me write them all down for you. F of five halves, F of six halves, F of seven halves, and F of eight halves. All right, I'm going to count for you. Make sure you know what you're doing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Certainly going to get six rectangles out of that. Let's do left, though. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to look at the left end point now. This is the left one. What am I doing? Starting here. And where's that? F of two over two. Then I go to F of three over two. Then I go to F of four over two. Then I go to F of five over two. Then I go to F of six over two. And then I go to F of seven over two. I'm gonna count for you. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, midpoint, again, I'm not trying to go a formula. I'm just trying to reason. If you can reason, it's gonna go a lot longer than memorization, all right? So what, 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 what are the midpoints gonna be? And I'll write them down for you. I want to do the first midpoint. It's right over here. So someone said, I wonder what that is. I'm going to cross these out now. So the first midpoint is going to be, let's see what that be. The, the length of the interval is a half. So the first point over here, the very first point would be one and a quarter. All right. Now that's not so bad, right? So someone says, well, if you're at one and a quarter here, what's the next one going to be? Then you got to add a half on. So if you did that, it'd be one and a quarter, and you have to add a half on. Now, be honest with you, I don't want to have to write that down. So I'm going to write down, I'm going to write everything in terms of quarters. So what do you get? The first one would be five quarters. And if I can write down things in the same base, in other words, same common denominator, I'm going to be okay. So, you know, that would be one and three quarters, right? That would be seven quarters, wouldn't it? So I'm starting to think that this is also a very simple, easy counting problem for me. All right. Let me just erase this stuff over here. I'm kind of, I hate to use mixed numbers for you. Well, let's write this down. What's the next number going to be? I hope you realize you're going up by two quarters. So what's the next one going to be? Nine quarters. What's the next one going to be? 11 quarters. 
We have a key to look at, by the way. What's next one gonna be? 11, 12, 13 quarters. What's next one gonna be? 15 quarters. Let me count these for you. I'll show you what we got over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's write it down. And what are you gonna get over here? F of five quarters. F of seven quarters. F of, again, nine quarters. F of 11 quarters. F of 13 quarters and F of 15 quarters. All right, I, I'm not interested in the computation, by the way. What I'm interested in is, did I get it right? So let's go back over here. And I, what I'm gonna claim over here is that, yeah, I, I, I did kind of expand it out, but some of you look at it and say, I, I think your answer is probably not the same as this one over here. I just wanna pull it on the side for you. All right, I wanna, I wanna just simply make sure you know that this is the same exact thing that I wrote down. And this is the midpoint one. They didn't write the other ones down though. All right, so give me one second. And I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna paste it here. And I'm gonna get my red pen out. And I wanna make sure you know that what we wrote down is really the same thing. Now, do you remember what I said F was? I said it's the root of X, right? So let's do first thing, first thing. All right, so first thing, did I get this 0.5? I see it. What's five quarters? F of five quarters, it's the square root of 1.25. What's seven quarters? That's 1.75. It's gonna be the root of 1.75. What's this one over here? I copy something down. Oh, it's, I'm sorry, it, I can't even read my own writing. That's nine quarters, sorry about that. That's two and a quarter, the root of. I see, I'm sorry, go back to red. That's good. What's the next one gonna be? 11 quarters, which is gonna be, uh, what's 11 quarters? Let's see, two and there's three quarters, 2.75, what am I saying? What's uh, 13 quarters? That's three, three and a quarter, that's a root of. What's 15 quarters? That would be three and three quarters, 3.75. Everything is working out fine. Now, by the way, I do the computation for you. My expectation is you should be able to do that computation, all right? So what I mean by that, using a calculator, whether it's handheld, Sage, whatever, you can do it, all right? So um, let's go to the trapezoid rule, all right? And as I do this over here, let me just shrink this down a little bit. And we're gonna talk about trapezoid rule now. And the trapezoid, um, you'd have to know the area of a trapezoid. And we're going to talk about trapezoid rule now. Before I do that, I want to claim our trapezoids are going to look like this over here. And if you did that, I'm going to call the length of this side A, the length of this side B, and I'm going to call this uh, the length of this side over here would be C. And what would this be? The area of this trapezoid would be A plus B over two times C, all right? Now, you may not recall that. It's easy enough to derive, but I'm gonna say it's, it's, it's a grade school formula for trapezoid, all right? What I wanna do is I'm gonna erase this now. And I, I think I can remember that. If not, I'll have to write it down again. And what I wanna do is I wanna see what's happening when I take my curve and I try to form a bunch of trapezoids in it. This is gonna be A, this is gonna be B. And I wanna point out, if I were drawing a trapezoid, this would be my first trapezoid, all right? And what are we gonna do? We're gonna have equal bases. And the way I'm gonna do that, I can divide into n equal pieces. Again, this is f of x. And we're gonna to try to develop a, a trapezoid rule. So what would I get? Well, the first one, looking at it, the base would be B minus A over N. But you know what the truth is? Every base will be the same. Every base is gonna be that. What's gonna change are these things over here. So I gotta figure out what that's gonna be. So I'm, I'm gonna write it down for you. And the way I'm gonna write this down, is it might seem strange to you. I'm gonna write down is, well, the first 
thing over here, I need to know that that's gonna be F of A. Now I'm gonna call this, you know, some arbitrary thing. Um, I'm gonna call it C1. Right, we'll talk about what that is later. And it's gonna be plus F of C1. All right, so th this is the first guy. And I'll, I'll underline it like this. That's the first one. If I do the next one, this would be the trapezoid would look like this. It's still on the same base, which is B minus A over N, but now what do we have? Well, I'm gonna call this one C2, and we'll talk about what those things are, are later. So what'd you get over there? You would get F of C1, oh, I forgot to put the two there, sorry about that. Because I, 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 I'm adding together to divide by two, I forgot that, plus F of C2 over two. And I keep moving over, right? So it's the next trapezoid over here. What's that gonna be? F of, oh boy, what would that be? That would be C2 plus F of C3 over two. And again, we're doing one at a time. And this is C3 over here. Yada, yada, yada. Eventually we're gonna get this over here. And there'll be one over here. And the question is, you know, what would that be? And I'm gonna say, you know, one, two, it might be tough, right? Let's take a look at it. Hmm. I guess I got to do something here, don't I? And let me just say, this is the first one, second one, third one, right? You see what I'm doing, right? One, two, three. I'm going to say this is the nth one, right? Right, that would be the nth one there. There's gonna be any of these rectangles. I'm sorry, trapezoids, I, start, I shouldn't have said rectangles. I mean, I start thinking that, what would this be over here then in that case? So let's take a look. Well, this over here would be, what would that be? That would be equal to C, let's looking at it. Um, C1, C2, C3, this would be CN, right? You get the idea? That'd be Cn. And this would be n minus one over here. I think you get the idea. So, you know, what are we getting over here? We're eventually going to get towards the end. Let me write that down for you. And that last guy, let me write that down for you. That's going to be kind of I'm gonna have to write that down. So it's gonna be F of B. What's before that? F of, that'd be CN minus one, right? Over two, what comes before that one? I think I could write that down. It's gonna be F of C N minus one f of c n minus two. That's a lot of writing. Hmm. Let's take a look at that. I'm gonna pull a two out. It really disturbs me a great deal. And let's write this down. f of a plus f of c one. I did this one, this one. Plus f of c one plus f of c two. I just did those, plus F of C2, plus F of C3. I think you get the idea. Yada, 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 plus F of, that's C, N minus two, plus F of C, N minus one. I wanna go back here and tell you what I'm doing. I'm clipping these off over here. Plus F of C, N minus one, plus F of B. Wow, it's a lot of writing. And I'm looking at that, it's just too much writing, isn't it? So let me see if I can maybe get this a little bit cleaner. B minus A over two N times F of A plus, well, there's actually two of the C ones, aren't there? So two F of C one, plus two F of the C2s. Oh, there's gonna be two F of the C3s, right? 
plus yada, yada, yada. Well, we're gonna get two of these, aren't we? So plus F of C N minus one, there's two of those plus F of B. All right, we'll go through examples. Don't worry, I know this is difficult. All right, question is what are the C's? All right, so let's write this down. What are the C's? Well, I'm gonna put down C1 is just simply A plus move over one. What are we moving over? B minus A over N, that's C1. What's C2? A plus B minus A over N times two, moving over two. What's CI? A plus B minus A over N I, all right? So I, I know what the C's are. So if I were to write this down as a formula, I'll write this down for you. B minus A over two N, that's an N. Let me get the eraser out, it doesn't look right. Two, whoops, that's not good either. Two N, F of A, plus F of B, plus two times the sum, I equals, let's worry about that later. And someone says, where are you starting at? Well, C1, then you're going to C2, and you're going up to N minus one. And what goes over your F of, oh boy, what's a C? We just did it, remember? And what's that going to be? I'm sorry, it's over there. It's going to be A plus, B minus A over N I, and we got our formula, all right? Now, of course, when I do an example, you're gonna see me not use a formula, but I wanna point out the formula is given to you in the notes. Let me go over this over here, trapezoid rule, and they got this formula written over here, all right? So let's go to the next page, and I'm hoping to give us a little example. Yep, they do. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm not using a formula, I'm using reasoning skills, right? Same problem, trapezoid method, n equals six. And let's go through this, all right? So we've already done the integration. We've already done the right end point, left end point, midpoint. Now we're doing trapezoid. So what I'm gonna do over here, I'm gonna you know, draw the picture sort of what this thing looks like. And we're going from one to four and we're dividing it to six equal pieces. So I think, you know what I'm gonna do? That's three divided by six, which is gonna be what? That'd be half, isn't it? And then you're gonna see me write down the numbers, which would be one, we did this before, I'd probably recollect this somewhat anyway, two, then two and a half, and then uh, that would be three, and then three and a half, and then four. And you know I like to write things in the same uh, fraction, same base would be two, right? So two over two, three over two, four over two, Oh, five over two, six over two, seven over two, and eight over two. Whoops, sorry about that. So if I were using the trapezoid method, I, I, I think I have it covered and it's gonna be trapezoid, I call it T6 now. The base for all the trapezoids is the same, it's one half. And what do I have to do? I have to add together things and over two, right? So it's gonna be, let's write this down for you. It's going to be the, the first guy is going to be f of two over two. Plus f of three over two. They're the two sides, by the way. Over two. Then I put the next one down, right? So it's going to be f of the side's going to be three over two. Plus the other side's going to be four over two. Over two. You're going to see six of these things pop up, by the way. They should be easy to write down. By the way, I'm going to clean it up. I'm not saying this is it. So it's gonna be four over two plus half of five over two. I'm just doing the two sides over two. Uh, I gotta keep going. We'll count them up later. Half of five over two plus half of six over two over two. We'll clean it up later. I know I keep saying it to you. And for a finite number, this isn't so bad to do. What are you gonna get? Seven over two plus F of eight over two over two. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom back and point out when I get one, two, three. Let me see if I did this. I think I might've forgot somebody. The reason I'm saying I forget someone, I, I uh, let's see, two, three, 
two, three, four, five. Oh, I see it now. I made a mistake. And so is, why did I know I'm like, I count it. And I know this is a mistake. I had to, I had to, I had to say, I, I counted wrong. And I get my eraser out. Give me a second. This will be six over two. Sorry about that. Seven over two. And there's one more to go. I'll go back to count in a second. F of seven over two plus F of eight over two, over two. All right, let me go back over here. I want to count them for you. And I got to clean it up for you. There's no doubt I'm going to clean this for you. So let's count it up. First one, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Exactly what we're expecting. I'm going to factor out a two. So I'm going to write T6, T6 down now for you. Two on the bottom, you factor out be a quarter. What do you get? F of one. That's done. Then I get two of these plus two F of three over two. Then I get two of these, two F of two. Then I get two of these plus two of F of five over two. You know what? I want to write down the two as uh, four over two. Not that you have to, I want to do it just so you know there's a pattern to these. What's next I gonna be? I think I'm ready to go. Two of F over six over two plus two times F of seven over two. What's the last guy gonna be? Plus F of eight over two, which is F of four. All right, so on exams, I would say this is a good thing to have written down over here. Do I want you to computation? Not unless it's really easy. Now, of course, I want to go back over their K. And I want to make sure you know we are giving you the correct numbers, right? So what is going to be one quarter? I got that. What's our F? Our F is still the root. So it'd be root of one, two times root, root of F, 1.5. Two times root of uh, F of two, two times the, uh, F of uh, 2.5. That's two times F of three. That's two times F of seven, uh, 3.5, and, and then F of four. Good computation is being done. All right, Simpson's rule, um, as far as I know at Essex, no one ever derives this. It's not derived. It's given. If it's given, the only thing you're going to be doing is doing what they get, gave to you. That's all you're gonna do. I know that's tough, but this is given now. What do you mean by given? You'll be given the formula. All right, let me read through it. Where it said, here it says, and again, I want to read this to you. N needs to be even. All right, we're given the same integral. What are we doing over here? B minus A over 3N, F of A. Then they got this 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2. Four, two. Where does it end? At a four. And F of A. And they tell you what the CIs are. This is given. So what I want to do is I want to tell you how we use a given to do a problem. All right. So I, I, I probably should copy the given. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to do it over here. I'm going to paste it in. And if I were asked to do this over here, I would take the given. All right, let me write this down. There's no thinking whatsoever. All right, what's the B? I'll write this down for you. The B is four. What's the A? The A is one. What's F of X? F of X is root X. That's all it is, all right? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna write this down. So Simpson's rule, S6, is six even? Yes. Let's write this down and we'll, we'll simplify later. What's B minus A? It's four minus one. I'm just copying this over here. What's three times N? Well, what's N? 
is six. Let me write this down for you. Three times six is 18. We'll do that later. Let's keep going. F of A, what's that? F of one plus four times F of C1. Let me write down C1 for you. C1 is A, what's A? One plus B minus A. I gotta write this down. You know what, I'll put I. There's gonna be B minus A. What's B minus A? Three, and three over six and a half, right? I. Well, then I can write this down. So it's gonna be F of, but what's one plus a half? Let's see, two, three as, right? Plus two F of C2. Well, that's gonna be four halves. Yeah, I'm writing it down that way for a reason. The pattern's gonna be four, two, four, two, but it ends on a four. What's next side gonna be? Four F of, we'll check the key later. Well, I'm going up a half, five halves. Plus two F of six halves plus four, right? We're going four, two, four, two, four F of seven halves. Now, some people just don't know when to stop. What's next going to be? Eight halves. That's our end point. So what goes over here, F of eight halves, which is four. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go back over here and I wanna look at the, uh, the work that you're given over here. And again, I'm gonna pull it over. I realize that sometimes the notes get really small when I do what I just did. I'm gonna blow this thing up for you though and blow everything up and see how we did, all right? Remember, F is a root function. I, I, I'm not interested in taking the root, but let's see if we got the right numbers. What's four minus one? It's three, what's three eighteenths? It's one sixth. So this is good. Sorry about that. What's F of one? Well, it's the root of one, which is one. Then what do you get F, four times F of 1.5, two times that's F of two, four times two point of F of 2.5, two times F of three, four times F of 3.5. And last but not least, that's gonna be F of four and F of four is actually two. And they do the computation for you. All right. I realize for a lot of students, this is an incredibly tedious thing to do. All right. I am not a big fan of doing things by hand, but we want to be able to do things pretty simply. All right. As I write things down now, I'm not consider, it's going to, I'm not going to consider the computation unless, of course, someone says, how do you do that on a calculator? I'll be more than happy to show you how to do that on a calculator. Here's the deal, though. You may want to think about this, about using other software. And I want to point out the code for Sage is pretty simple. All right, it does a numerical integration. And you may want to think about that. You may want to say that numerical integration, why would you want to do that? Well, I don't know, just see if you can do it. All right, so um, let me take a look. Uh, now what we have to do next, which is the examples.